Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship has completed its first vertical landing only to explode minutes after the successful touchdown. Dr Brad Tucker from the Australian National University joins us now. Good afternoon, Brad. Always great to see you there. Do we know why this SpaceX rocket exploded? Yeah, look, thanks, Joe. And it, it, look, it was good for SpaceX that they did land it with the first or the previous two ones exploding on touchdown. Now, what it appears to be is that methane, which is used as one of the fuel sources, especially in these starships, uh, was leaking after landing. We did see some flames coming down on landing. Uh, at some point, it ignited. And when you light methane, uh, it tends to blow up, unfortunately. So obviously the source of the methane leak needs to be pinpointed, um, but to SpaceX, they, they landed it. And that was the big goal that they wanted to get that they hadn't done in the, the, the last two tests. Yeah, so putting a silver lining on it there, Brad, and what is the significance of the fact that it did actually land given the track record? Yeah, you know, they're really trying to test a new way of launching into space, really going to the moon and Mars. You know, the Falcon 9, which they use now, has been successful because it comes back down, lands, can be refueled, relaunched, and that reduces the cost. So they want to do this with Starship, and that requires them to land so they can refuel and relaunch it. Now, the fact that the last two times they didn't get the successful landing... It's really taught them about the, how fast they come in, the exact angles, kind of like landing an airplane, right? How slow do you need to come in? At what angle? When do you turn the flaps on? When do you drop all those gears? They're learning all that. They're learning to fly in a sense, to fly this rocket and land it. So the fact that they did improve over the last two times in landing it and touching down, look, that is a success. Yes, obviously, mm -hmm. It didn't work well eight minutes later, but, you know, they're making those steps. They're going forward, and that's what you want. And, mm. you know, they always say, right, it's not rocket science. In this case, it is. It is actually rocket science. So what can be learned from this attempt and what improvements could be made for future attempts? So the fact that they got those the, the rocket boosters turning on at the right time, that was their big success. Uh, when did it kick on? As we saw in the video, it comes back down. It's kind of gliding down. It swings around and comes back down. So all of that worked, which is a good sign. Obviously, they need to figure out why their, their fuel source is essentially leaking and how to prevent that. So what they'll be able to use now is the data to say, all right, here are the parameters of how we could do to stick the landing. So we can still do that. They can now explore a bit of how fast, how slow some of those other angles work. Uh, and then obviously get to that point of that fuel leakage. You know, it, so it's, it's good that these tests, in fact, sometimes don't fully succeed or at least have some small problems because you want to get the bugs out before you start using it and pe putting people on. Uh, these rockets. In another story, Brad, a Japanese billionaire is looking for eight lucky people to join him for a moon voyage on a SpaceX rocket. What do you have to do to be picked? So they want to take this starship, uh, you know, the, the not exploding version, uh, <laughs> yes, around ideally. the moon uh, in 2023. <laughs> ideally, that's right. Uh, so He's looking for uh, creative types. What he wants is people who will be inspired by their trip and take that into their other work. So it's open to anyone in the world. You can enter right now. The pre-application stage closes, I think, on the 14th, so maybe the 15th of March, Australia time. And he's looking for people who are going to push the bounds into their work, really into the creative artistic types, and can inspire the next generation from what they experience in space. And he wants people from all around the world. So that means there is no reason we couldn't see a very uh, creative Australian hmm. on this trip around the moon in 2023. Are you going to apply, Brad? Look, I, I don't know how creative I can be. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sure my wife will be creative in the application to get rid of me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, look, I'll, I'll see what I can come up with and uh, I'll let you know. You've got to be in it to win it. Brad Tucker, it's great to speak to you. Thank you. That's right.